ready for our next speaker, Stephen Halliwell, who is a, uh, a regular, becoming a regular at the <laughs> meeting. Okay. So, well, thank you very much, uh, Daniela, Alex, and Morton, for uh, setting up this event, and of course for setting up all the previous events that have led us all here. Uh, we were here last year, but we didn't present. Uh, so it's very nice to be here to present. Um, I'd also like to thank Morton for placing me as the last thing before your dinner. Um, so intermittent fasting, it's okay. Uh, I'm going to try and uh, be relatively quick and relatively simple. We've seen lots of data at this conference. We've seen lots of data in certain people's talks in this conference. And we've also seen lots of data on the single slides in people's talks in this conference. So I'm hoping not to uh, blow you away too much. And I'd like to tell you who Rejuveron is, what we do, how we do it in the first half. And the second half, I'm just going to give you a really, really brief snapshot of the five uh, programs that we have running at Rejuveron, um, uh, based primarily in Zurich, but also in other parts of the world. So Rejuveron's vision is to deliver innovation, more specifically in the form of therapies, that will help people live longer, healthier lives. It's, it's not particularly different from the views of many other people in the room, uh, but it's also important to state that that's how we feel about this. And uh, it, we are a clinical stage biotechnology company. I'm going to tell you about five programs later on, and two of them are in the clinic, or two of our affiliates are in the clinic. And I've got the hallmarks of aging on here because it's a very useful framework for all of us to think within and around uh, but it's not set in stone and it evolves uh, and obviously I think there's just been another publication out where there are, are larger numbers and we all have our favorite number of hallmarks. It's just a very useful way of thinking about this. It's also very useful to communicate to other people who don't understand the biology of aging uh, and in particular also to investors and we need investors as well and we need to make them understand what we're doing in order to drive uh, the whole ecosystem as James alluded to before. So more about those in a minute. This is, this is kind of the, the, the busiest word slide, and it's, it's important to have a few words on a slide. But basically, in, in the middle, at the center of what we do at Rejuveron, is that we are thinking about the biology of aging and mechanisms of aging, as the great scientists in this room and, and online uncover. Uh, we are trying to identify primarily chronic diseases that lend themselves uh, to the aging biology as we understand it. And of course, they have to have an unmet medical need. And, and most of the time, the third is valid or, or, you know, um, uh, for most chronic diseases. Additionally, I should add, because this, this is a story about one of, our, one, of our, one of our daughters, is that if the biology of aging is also linked to a, for instance, pediatric genetic indication, but we understand that we can reverse that problem but we believe the way we reverse it can also lend itself to broader diseases in a particular piece of biology. That's also an approach that we can take at Rejuveron. We've got one example of that. The, the, the dream, the vision there, of course, is really to take those molecules, develop them well, do all the things that are, are going to give us the, the most chance of success in that first proof of concept human trial. Uh, because that's when people start to pay attention to things because they're actually working in humans. Uh, but the idea is, is that if we can accrue enough safety data, we can move into expansion indications that have um, uh, contributory factors based on the model, the, the disease mechanism we're targeting, uh, but, we, but have a larger um, uh, population base and, and maybe less severe. Uh, and one day we would hope that some of our therapies could end up in everybody once they reach the age of 60. Or, or 55, or 52. Um, we, we couple that sort of core way of doing things uh, with an AI platform uh, that we use to put these things together from all the data around the world. But in, re in reality, so far, we've been using it to actually design chemical libraries based on hit lists and gene lists that we're getting from proprietary and, and non-proprietary data. The company, the portfolio of the company uh, is diverse across modality across the stage in development, as you'll see in a minute, uh, and across the aging biology hallmarks and beyond. One, one note about modality is that um, if we really hope to go into very large populations, 
some modalities are clearly more expensive than others per treatment, and that's, that may or may not become a factor for us. And so we are a decentralized platform of um, a team at Rejuveron of um, very experienced uh, pharma drug discovery, chemists, biologists, and clinical folks who take on the role of looking after the scientific founders in our daughter companies and nurturing their science discoveries whilst we make sure that we translate it in the best way possible for the greatest chance of success in a uh, proof of concept trial. So that's just the team slide, very, very briefly. You, you, you probably don't know very many of these people at all, uh, but amongst us we have um, many, many decades of pharma, drug discovery and development experience, uh, and also some financial experience in, in the biotech world with Christian Angemeyer as our lead investor, um, also chairman of the board. So now I'm just gonna move on and tell you really, really briefly about um, about our daughter uh, companies uh, and what they're up to, uh, primarily about their sort of lead asset. And I'm starting, I'm just doing this in an order, and the order is that it's the one furthest along in, in the clinic. So the first two are in the clinic and the next three are well on their way. So very briefly, um, endogena. Retinitis pigmentosa uh, is a devastating uh, familial multifactorial uh, uh, genetic disease. Uh, and results in the loss of um, cells in the back of your eye that prevent you from seeing uh, light and color. It's loss of everything, okay? It's a terrible disease. Um, 1.5 million people uh, around the world are, are, are getting this or have this. And Endogena has developed, uh, using the AI tools to develop chemical libraries, has developed some compounds that stimulate the, the new growth of the retinal progenitor stem cells uh, in the eye. Uh, to repopulate the outer nuclear layer and inner nuclear layer of the eye, and these cells are able to regenerate into the correct rod and cone cells in the eye, uh, which, is, which is pretty remarkable. Uh, Endogena is now in a, a phase one stroke 2A, uh, rising dose tox study with um, a bunch of functional endpoints as well as readouts. Uh, so they went in, the, in uh, three months ago now, they went into the clinic, and so that's going to be a readout next year in, in a disease where there really isn't a general or a generic way of treating that disease. All the successful therapies in this space are gene therapies that target a few percent of the whole RP population. Uh, and we hope to be uh, gene agnostic or mutation gene agnostic in that sense. So um, Anne is here in the audience, uh, I hope, or she's here at the meeting. So Anne Bellin is the CEO of Rejuvenate Biomed. And when I met Anne the first time, as we were looking for early stage companies, but we, we, we saw this and we went to talk to Anne, and, and she showed us the data on the right-hand side here. And this is really impressive. Uh, I know this because I was at Novartis and we had a sarcopenia program that, that was, ended up not so impressive, unfortunately. Uh, and the bottom line is that Anne has an approach with her team um, in Belgium where they simply look for combinations of known, approved, safe drugs, and look for unanticipated effects in um, a worm screening platform, uh, and then move these things on into the relevant mouse models. And in this particular case, the first asset that's in a phase 1b for acute sarcopenia uh, is a combination of, of, of two drugs uh, that on their own do very little in a uh, mitochondrial mutant mouse model of sarcopenia uh, at doses that would be equivalent so not even the highest dose that you would be given to humans for those two drugs for their indications, respectively. But when you combine them, uh, they have remarkable effects on, on running, time of running, speed of running, everything else. And more importantly, they also um, improve muscle force per unit area. And so I'm going to stop there and let Anne tell the rest of that story tomorrow morning, 10.50. That's enough time to recover from cocktails tonight. Um, and so I hope to see you all back here tomorrow, at least by 10.50, to hear Anne speaking. It's truly, it's a great team in Belgium. And so number three, this is now not yet clinical, senescence therapeutics. I'm not sure any, any portfolio biotech company should not have a senescence uh, uh, target or asset in their portfolio. Manuel Serrano is the co-founder of senescence therapeutics, um, along with um, Tim Cash, who runs runs this program in Barcelona, uh, and Tim worked with Manuel's lab. You know that Manuel Serrano discovered that when you treat certain solid tumors 
with uh, chemotherapies. You induce uh, the, uh, the, the, some of the tumor cells evade the drug by becoming senescent and no longer being in the cell cycle. Uh, and they contribute to all kinds of complications in these tumors and have been associated with metastasis. So we have a monoclonal antibody against a cell surface target that is expressed upon chemotherapy treatment in a relevant tumor. That's just some data here from a publication. Uh, related targets are not massively up, uh, overexpressed upon chemotherapy uh, induction. And our antibody binds this receptor and makes these cells now susceptible to immune clearance by the normal immune system in the body. So that's a, uh, and that's, that's gone into CMC. We're about 18 to 21 months away from the clinic. Let's see if we can, we can keep that going. So it's a very exciting project from Manuel's lab. In the background there, we have multiple more targets for the same kind of mechanism that we're working on to validate. And we also have a platform for senescent cells in CKD running. Uh, number four, yes, number four, telomere therapeutics. Um, you've just heard a wonderful talk by Fabrizio about uh, restoring telomeres or preventing DNA damage, by, DNA damage along telomeres. Uh, we have a slightly different mechanism of action here that we've discovered, or sorry, I should say, our co-founder has discovered. And basically, um, our co-founders discovered that when you delete a particular target in, in uh, patient-derived iPSCs, from telomeropathy diseases, uh, he can restore telomere length to their more or less normal size uh, without making them get any longer either. Uh, and so we know about this target and we know that there are compounds out there that, that hit this target at least. Uh, they may hit other things as well. And so we're simply optimizing our compounds for this target uh, for clinical trials in, in a rare disease indication to do with telomeropathies. The idea here, of course, is to expand into diseases that, that you've just seen on Fabrizio's, Fabrizio's slide very well that are associated with telomere damage in some way. So uh, on to the, the fifth, last, but most definitely not the least. Um, this is, this is uh, some people might call this slightly more moonshot style. It comes with a bit more risk, but I actually really, really like this project. It could be the most exciting of all. It's going to take a longer road. As we all age, our blood-brain barrier decays. And so uh, we are, we are, that, blood, that BBB decay causes a loss of proteostasis on, on either side. So things, proteins, metabolites get to where they shouldn't be on either side. And things that should get to where they should don't necessarily get to the right place either. One of the consequences of this altered proteostasis either side of the blood-brain barrier is neuroinflammation, and neuroinflammation is bad because it causes cognitive decline, dementia, and a thousand other diseases that are all lumped together here in this space. Uh, and so there's a whole set of diseases called the cerebral small vessel diseases, which are all somehow attributable to basically a damaged blood-brain barrier. So we took Parabryo's mouse data from Lee Rubin's lab, who is the co-founder of Vascular Therapeutics, and we looked for all the genes that went from young, old parabiosis up, down, up, or down, up, down, depending on how you want to look at it. And we simply made a very small chemical library against all the gene products of the things that changed and related pathways that changed and screened a blood-brain barrier model in vitro. So we have got a very high hit rate, and some of our hits are already sub-micromolar in our cellular assay. And so we're now in uh, uh, validation of those hits, and we're investigating... Um, relatively complicated but really quite useful animal models to prove our proof of concept for this particular story. This will be a tougher route to the clinic. Nobody wants to hear the word cognition as a clinical endpoint. People run for the hills. But we think we've got some other ways of doing this and uh, we're on a good track. So that was number five. I'm going to um, wind it up here because people are hungry and I think I'm about on time, which is good. Uh, so, we are a biotech company. We do focus on curing the diseases of aging. Um, we want everyone to live more healthily uh, and, and also longer because of that. Uh, we have a decentralized drug development framework with an expert preclinical and clinical team in-house that help our uh, scientific founders sparkle at what they do whilst we make sure that the translation is efficient, uh, careful, um, and, and controlled. 
We have a reasonably diverse portfolio, as you've just seen. Uh, we have uh, various modalities. We're at different stages, preclinical, clinical. Uh, we have state-of-the-art labs in, in Zurich, in Schlieren, in the Biotechna Park. Please get in contact if you're in Zurich. Um, they're really, it's a really nice space we have. And we also, of course, have some of our people, uh, the Anne, Anne's company we invested in in Belgium. Um, uh, Senescence Therapeutics is based mainly in Spain, next to Manuel Serrano's lab, until he leaves. Uh, and that's it. Age better, live longer. We're a biotech company. We're always looking for new opportunities. Uh, and we're also a biotech company, and we're also looking to raise funds. So if you fit either of those categories or anyone else, uh, I look forward very much to talking to you later in, the, in bar seven. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to be part of this journey. Uh, so I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Stephen. We have time for... Uh, for some uh, questions. Everyone's uh, hungry. Everybody is hungry, yeah. Um, so how, how far are we from being able to buy this in, uh, <laughs> on Amazon or in, uh, in the a pharmacy? Long, a long time, a long time still. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's, it's really exciting that, that we're all pushing the envelope on, on the crazy stuff, mm. but that, that, you know, you, you there's also some people have to chip away at the pragmatic approach with, with clinical endpoints that we already know we can use or we, we think we can use when we get there in two, three years' time. Uh, so I, I think it's, uh, some things go quicker than others. Right. Um, but uh, it's looking good, but it's going to still take a long time. For the OPA1 uh, mm -hmm. indication, um, so these are quite rare. Uh, still relatively rare um, disease indications? The if, if you're going for patients that have OPA1... No, 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 uh, that's, ju that's just a mouse model for That's sarcopenia. the mouse model, okay. So that's a really good... So Anne's chosen a good, really, a mouse model that has to reflect some of the biology of both a, a, acute and chronic sarcopenia. Right. So you kind of get both at once. Right. Uh, and that's why that model... She, she, I don't want to say more about that. She'll tell you tomorrow. Okay, okay, great. Okay. Thank you so much.